This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have a friend of mine for several years re-entering the fitness boutique space with a vengeance post-COVID. Cas Marte, con body, winner of the award that I judged him on several <laughs> years ago off his PowerPoint slides. Welcome to Halo Talks. Yeah, uh, thank you, P. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Awesome. Well, um, you know, look, you, you made some waves before uh, COVID and had a good thing going. Obviously, everything was hit on a uh, on pause like a tape recorder back in the day. Um, you know, so talk to us about how you're you know, relaunching the business and, um, and then we'll kind of riff about getting real results. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, COVID was a bit of a blessing for me in, in, in some sort of way, cause we were quickly pivoted to doing online stuff. You know, all our stuff is all body weight. So we don't use any equipment for us. It was, we didn't have to send anybody a, a treadmill at home. It was like, turn on your camera, do what we do in a small constrained space, like my, a prison cell. So mm -hmm. I remember that that same day, they, I had a 12 o'clock class and Cuomo just announced all gyms and fitness boutiques have to close down. And my partner was like, hey, you, you can't do anything. And I was like, nah, I'm doing shit. And I was like, everybody, I'm not going to refund you, but I'm going to send you a, a Zoom link, uh, turn on the camera, and everybody had the same experience. So, so it was uh, a quick pivot, and we had uh, an incredible community that supported us throughout, throughout the way. So we, uh, we were able to you know, survive this. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting as you say that because some of the groups that require a lot of equipment – um, or switching stations and so on and so forth. You know, they try to do the home workouts, but it's not authentic. It's not what I provided you in, in the studio or in the club. So kind of people gravitated towards things that they were comfortable with if they could replicate it. Um, so how, how did that, um, did you end up using a platform? Did you do everything off of Zoom? And what are you doing going forward? Yeah, so right now we did, uh, like, we try to experiment with different companies, you know, uh, but we, the, the easiest thing with, for us was Zoom, um, mm -hmm. and we're still continuing to do Zoom. Uh, it's, it's a great platform. Uh, you know, we're using Mariana Tech uh, software on the back end. People get, like, a five minute, uh, a five minutes before class, they get the Zoom link, um, you know, change, the link actually changes every time. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's easy for us. We set up in the actual studio today, uh, we put like a 4K camera in the middle of the room and we're doing it at the same time. So in person and virtual are running simultaneously uh, at the same time. We're doing the same thing uh, in the parks as well. So we've been able to do a lot of stuff outdoors um, and just make it happen and survive. Awesome. So from, from a standpoint of, of the peak of COVID, uh, when people were sheltering in place, you know, what kind of what was the maximum number or what, you know, what, when did you kind of stop and say like, Holy cow, like I got this many people, you know, I touched this many people today. So one, one class I did 800 people. Oh, wow. That's in amazing. A Zoom call. And that's, that's when I amazing. had a, that's what I had an issue. Cause I had to uh, push this. And that was like a special event. We did like a private class for, for somebody. Private, were, private class for 800 people. 800 That's people. like my mother telling me, like, we're having a uh, Paul Mitz for, for 800. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was a one off class, but it was, it was, uh, it, I was like, I had to up my subscription on the Zoom because, you know, it starts off like, you know, we had the free one. We were, you know, and I was like, oh shit, I got to start paying for this thing. And that's, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's I knew I, uh, we had something when everybody, you know, gave us great comments and videos and people reposting and, and seeing what's up. So, so when you get that kind of success online digitally and the fact that you don't have to drop ship any kind of equipment to people, you know, you've got your virtual community. You know, how do you think about leases right now? How do you think about, you know, getting a 40 page lease from a landlord and saying, Hey, I can go on my zoom or I can try and negotiate this deal and, you know, to actually, you know, be tied or personal guaranteed to something that, you know, maybe isn't as essential as it used to be. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I definitely, I'm definitely not jumping into like a 20,000 or, you know, whatever type of real estate, real retail space, unless it's like a great, incredible deal, you know, and mm -hmm. I feel like we have the leverage now to, you know, 
hey, you guys have this space. All right, I'm not going to pay 30000 You know, my budget is 10000 Are you going to work with me? Uh, and it, try to find somebody then, you know, if they can't find anybody. And then, and it's, and I've gotten a lot of people hitting me up, you know, for spaces, but I'm, I'm definitely not looking into another space for a little while until things like settle down. I think, you know, virtually is a, is a place to, to stay and go. Uh, but also like having an actual space. I love the fact that you, you know, in-person interaction is not the same as virtual interact interaction. So, you know, our space was amazing. I, I have a second floor loft in the Lower East Side, uh, 1,600 square feet. Um, and we only paid $5,000 a month. So I didn't, ha I, you know, we use that as a, as a production studio, basically. Sure. You know? So for us, it was not like a crazy burn. So, you, so you've kept that space throughout? Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. So, you know, you, you're looking to bring on some additional capital now. I see you've got a pretty strong presence. You've got some, uh, you got your book, right? Yep. And, and, and some other, um, you know, digital related downloads. You know, how do you think about raising capital? Obviously you, you got to get over the hurdle as you, you know, articulated your Ted talks about, you know, when you were 13 until you were 20 and basically running a very entrepreneurial business, you know, you just weren't working for Merck or Pfizer. Um, <laughs> you know, so, uh, We'll leave yeah. it at that for a second. So like, what are some of the things that people either say and say, look, I want to be a part of your you know, rebirth or I say, Hey, look, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it's right now it's been a, I say it's a blessing because, you know, a lot of change is like coming about in the system. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of people want to get part of the black lives matter movement, want to support not minority owned businesses and, uh, we've been fighting criminal justice, which has been like a systemic issue for so long. You know, 95% of the people in New York City that are arrested in Rikers Island right now, the, the largest city jail, uh, you know, is people who are black or Hispanic, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could just see that that was like an opportunity for us to be like, hey, we've been doing this work fighting criminal justice for so long. I've hired over 50 people now with a, you know, zero recidivism rate. Nobody has gone back into the prison system because we made something that actually worked and fulfilled an, an economy for their pockets to uh, be sustainable. They don't have to go back to the streets to make money. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of like B2B stuff. Uh, you know, we, we just signed up uh, SAP. They're looking to onboard around 24,000 employees uh, on, oh. our on our platform which is going to be a game changer at $10 a month, you know, like I'm signing, uh, you know, with Vayner media, you know, we were talking, Dave, Dave and I were talking about uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. We signed up, you know, their team on board. Um, so we're, we're using our platform. So other companies could show how socially responsible or could fulfill their social responsibility. If they want to get into the criminal justice space, you know, Hey, get your employees fit on our platform. Plus, hire people coming out of the prison system to train them, you know? So there's where we've been taking the business right now. Yeah, that's great. From, from a standpoint of, um, you know, the, 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 the authenticity of the workout, you know, talk, talk to us a little bit about how you kind of refine that, you know, in a, in a small quarters and then kind of decided to take that and turn it into a business. Yeah, I mean, my, my whole story, I, you know, I went into prison for running a multi-million dollar drug business. Uh, at 19, I was making over $2 million a year. Got locked up at 23, and that's when I found out I had all these health issues. My cholesterol levels were through the roof. They told me if I don't start exercising, that I, within five years, I could probably die of a heart attack. So that this is where the health and fitness got into my world, and it saved my life. Uh, I kept working out in a in my prison cell and lost 70 pounds in six months. And I used that same workout method and started implementing it with other inmates. And I, I, it wasn't until I like ended up in solitary confinement that I started thinking about what I wanted to really do when I came home. And I came up with the idea of Combody then. Uh, and just started doing it when I came home. Um, I mean, today we've trained over 50,000 people. That's amazing. Um, so, so talk a little bit about, you know, so like SAP, and, uh, you know, Gary V's company, you know, if I'm a, um, if, if I'm a mid-sized company, let's say I got a hundred employees, what, what's the actual program? Are you, are you, 
checking in on people or just giving them access? Are you holding them accountable or they becoming combody members? Yeah, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff. We're competing against the department, uh, the back end. You could write comments and all that stuff. You know, we're doing also events as well. So on uh, monthly, we're going to be having like discussions on, you know, presenting one of my trainers on sharing their stories, how they got into the criminal justice space and how they met me, how they're affecting their lives now. Uh, and then we're doing a whole bunch. We have a whole bunch of planned events like turkey drives that we were doing during the pandemic. We're going to continue doing that for people that want to interact in person. Uh, we're doing toy drives for Christmas for the homeless shelters. We're doing food drives. We just did like a whole drive for the girls club where we, we collected a whole bunch of Lululemon uh, yoga pants that are, a lot of our clients were not using and washed them and gave it to them, you know, things of that nature that actually like bring tangible, you know, uh, change, you know what I mean? That's great. So being, being in the Lower East Side, sounds like you've been there for pretty much your whole life. Um, you know, how are you able to take this as somewhat of a showpiece to say, hey, look, there's other tracks that you could go down. However, if you like athletics, if, you, if you're if you into fitness, here's a path for you. And you don't need to, to take a couple of turns that I did, you know, just kind of uh, use that. Uh, I don't know if you ever played that game, like shoots and ladders back in the day. Like, just take this ladder up to me. You yeah. don't have to go in, down any of the shoots and you know, I usually say experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. You're here, you're here. Uh, so how's that been from a community standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've gone to a lot of, you know, criminal justice spaces where we have juvenile offenders like Avenues for Justice, which is ran, uh, as we used to call it the Andrew Glover program that, that helps like 16, 17, 18 year olds that have been impacted by the system and still on probation and stuff like that and giving them some of idea or an opportunity that uh, a space that's possible for them to make money and, and get out of that world of, Hey, I need to sell drugs to help my family out. You know, I'm um, just giving somebody an alternative and I get tons of jail mail. Like my book is in, uh, I don't know how many prisons, but I get jail mail from all around the country just asking like, Hey, I need a job when I come home. You know, I, I've been working out in the prison yard for 15 years. You know, I, I'm, I'm ready for combat. So, uh, you know, we have uh, the, you know, the 70 million Americans with criminal records, um, you know, so well, it's endless the amount of, of pool that I could tap into to give opportunities to. Uh, but right now we're not, we're not that big yet. And is that's where we hope to, to grow to, you know, hire as many people coming out of the system as possible. Yeah. yeah I mean, on, on that thread, is there a way to, you know, be con body certified and then maybe, you know, pull off like some like a Zumba type of business model where, you know, look, you can teach us wherever you want. You pay us X amount per month just to kind of like have as big of a universe as you can. You can't hire everybody. Yeah, we that's that's the goal right there. So um, I'm working on a combat certification. It's a uh, it's also we have a nonprofit component component where we're going to be helping people go through that course, get certified. Uh, where Zumba is uh, another, uh, we just spoke to the, the CEO of Zumba who's looking to invest in us as well. Uh, okay. And we're, we're having a discussion with him to bring that, bring that model inside the prison uh, so we can help mm -hmm. them get certified while they're inside and, you know, bring that out and have, you know, pull of trainers on when it, once they come out. Yeah. From, from a standpoint of, um, you know, nutrition, you know, is that everything you've learned on that has basically been self-educated? Yeah, I mean, I, I I tell people like, yo, you know, they a lot of people ask me, what should I eat? I'm like, you know what the fuck to eat, to put the pizza down, <laughs> you know, pick up a salad, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, don't eat that ice cream at 12 at night. I, I So for me, I think some of it is, is pretty self-explanatory. I, I know people have different dietary, you know, factors and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I know for the most part, I don't, I don't suggest anybody uh, meal plans and stuff like that. Uh, something that I, I want to explore and get into in the future, but you know, I feel like, you know, it's pretty easy to eat healthy if you want to eat healthy, you know? Yeah. Well, what's the, um, what's the range of ages that you've had on some of these, uh, Zooms workouts? Um, I mean, all types of ranges. I mean, the most common is like 25 to 35 young professional females, but like yesterday, I had a 70-year-old guy, 
you know, my mom is 67. She does this four times a week with us, you know. Awesome. Uh, and then I got my son, you know, who works out, you know, every once in a while. He's 13 years old. So I, I've had a crazy amount of ranges, but the most common is that, that, that 25 to 35 range. Yeah, that's great. So what are some of the other things that, you know, besides the digital, you know, a- any other trends that you're seeing, um, any thing related to, uh, you know, how you're going to reopen the studio that you're going to change given the time you've had to think through it? Yeah, absolutely. I think I can never go back. You know, people say 100% occupancy and I was I was always operating as like stick sardines in a can and stick as many people as possible. So we had like uh, the actual workout space is 700 square feet and we had 24 people in there. So it was like very, you know, side by side, a couple inches apart. Yeah, I can't go back to that that audience, but uh, the virtual camera is still there. You know, we're running it simultaneously and we're looking to probably fit like 16 people at most so we could keep that separation that, you know, see if we could do like three feet apart. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the goal. I also want to, you know, start exploring the, the apparel side. Um, you know, I feel like we have a really great branding opportunity on that end and we haven't really done much with it. Um, so I'm talking to a few people that's, you know, designing stuff and, teaming up with people, you know, that I feel like we could really blow up and, and, and then also use some of that, some of that sales to go to our foundation side so we could help, you know, provide an opportunity for people coming home. Gotcha. So last question related to, um, you know, you as an entrepreneur and you may be trying to delegate as much as possible so you could go on to, you know, cut some of these bigger deals or, you know, go into these corporations you know, how, how big is your bench? How, how often are you teaching the class just to kind of stay close to the business? Um, and how, how much of it is you say, hey, look, you know, I've done this. I'm kind of the architect. And now the architect's got to go on and, and, and get the next frontier. I, I, I love teaching classes. So I'm, I'm, I'm teaching every Tuesday uh, morning and then Saturday afternoon. And so... I always keep that on my schedule. I'm not, I, I, I feel like I work my flights around that. So if I have to go somewhere, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be traveling from Wednesday to Friday so, so I can bake it back to class on Saturday. Um, I don't know. I just, I really like having that, that interaction and being there. Uh, I, I, obviously I'm not teaching, you know, 20 classes. What, like when I started a week, you know, I was right. burning myself out and doing everything, but, uh, you know, it just gives me time to, you know, be on, on opportunities like this so I can amplify the business more. Great. So what, tell us, um, cause we've got a lot of, uh, individual investors and some venture funds, um, that listen to this podcast, just a little background on how much you want to raise. Uh, and then we can get this podcast out to the network. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Uh, we're raising $3 million. We have about half committed right now, like 1.6. Um, at a $12 million uh, va- pre-money valuation. Uh, and this is where we're at. We're looking to close around by uh, the end of June. And, um, you know, if you want to invest, get on, on, the, on the ground right now. Gotcha. Awesome. All right, man, you got any, uh, you got any quotes that you live by or any sayings that are uh, cautisms you want to share with us? Trust the process. Trust the process. You know, I, was, I started this... Uh, in the park by myself eight years ago, you know, there was times where nobody was showing up, uh, but I continue showing up every single day, delivering a great product and I knew it was going to work and I just kept doing it and kept doing it and it started working, you know, and I feel like that's all you need to do is show up every day, deliver a great product and trust the process. Awesome. All right. On that note, check the show notes for Combody investor materials love what you're doing uh love the perseverance and i feel like the market sentiment has finally caught up to where you were when we first met and you know only good things ahead so thank you congrats good to see you again i'll see you in person when i'm back in the city thank you pete appreciate it buddy talk to you soon thank my friends at burn the r r r n for sponsoring this podcast they are the innovative company behind the world renowned burn board 
Many of you don't know, I was one of the top roller hockey players in all of Nassau County back in 1988 to 1990. If I had a burn board, watch out, I would probably be an NHL legend. Got a seven-day free trial on their on-demand library of hundreds of workouts. $30 off the purchase. Check it out at shop.theburn.com. We'll have it in the show notes. Use the checkout code HALO and go burn it on the burn board. Ice hockey in your living room at home fitness. Low cost, low tech, low impact. Go HALO, burn it up.